everyone! Welcome to Karma Plays, and today we have something a little special. A little special, because this... Yes, Spyro the Dragon. This is a video game that was probably one of the first ones that really got me into gaming. I was a little too young to really get into um, the earlier consoles. Genesis was the one that I started gaming on, but I didn't really make it into a hobby until about the PlayStation 1 and N64 era. Spyro has this little special place in Karma history because it is the very first game I ever 100% com uh, completed, or 120 whatever it's called. I took the extra time to go find all the gems and all the extra dragons. I loved this game that much. However, I haven't played it since then, so this will be a little bit of an experience. It'll be fun to see if it still holds up, if it's still really fun, and what I still think of it. I'm guessing it'll still be fun. Okay, rolling. Because oh, dragons are fun. Been peaceful here in the five worlds, or is it six? <laughs> Even the dragon dragons age, are fun. We now have twelve thousand treasure, or is it fourteen thousand? <laughs> what about this Ganasty Ganort character? Now I understand he's found a they magic spell to geez. turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple. He has been contained in By simple, you mean he doesn't have a very high polygon no count? That's true. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. That does it! Looks like I've got some things to do. Spyro gets overlooked because he's short. He's the hero of the day because he's short. There's something kind of funny about Spyro. Even though I absolutely loved this game, I never played any other ones. This is the only Spyro game that I've played. Until Skylanders. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the artisan world. Then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. For those who don't know, Skylanders is actually really, really fun. I actually first played um, the Disney one. Shoot, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, I first tried out the Disney one at a friend's house, and it was really boring. It was terrible. And then I tried Skylanders out, and it was really fun. So I'm gonna play a figurine collection. Skylanders. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torch him. Keep your horns on, Spyro. You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Um. His name is Sparks, and he's, he's helping super and protecting annoying you. Super annoying in later games. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. He's like Navi, if Navi could say more than one word. He's so exponentially more annoying. Uh, remember, you can torch stuff. Holy shit, you can go sonic speed headbutting. Let's go hit this guy. Did I win? Oh no, he's still there. Why is you not dead? Oh shit. Ah! Oh god, steering. There we go. Alright, cool. So. You know, for an early 3D game, this game still looks pretty damn nice. I mean, sure, you can, like, count the amount of polygons on anything, but it doesn't really matter, because it's colorful, it's bright. Where'd the other guy go? Get back here! I'm not done hitting you with flame. Oh my god, steering in this game is a little bit suspect. A little bit suspect. But overall, it's definitely, yeah, for, you know, early 3D, I think its graphics still hold up quite well. I mean, sure, uh, handheld consoles that we have nowadays have higher resolution than this does, have a higher poly count, but there's definitely something worth saying about games that take a stylistic approach. I've always found that any game in any generation that tries to go for hyper-realistic 
tends to date itself a lot faster than any of the other games. Chess. What's this one? Bruh. Oh, it gave me an extra life. Okay. Yeah. Camera and controls are a little bit suspect, but, you know, it's an early 3D game. I mean, I'm playing this on an uh, an emulator with an Xbox controller, so I do have a little bit more functionality than I should, because uh, I'm pretty sure original... Oh, you can roll! Okay. Um, oh, okay. Okay, rolling. Okay, that's a little weird. I might have to set that up later. Uh, since I'm using a ROM, I had to hotkey the buttons myself. Some of the buttons changed. Like, one of my bumpers is roll but the opposite bumper is shift the camera, so that's a little confusing. I'm gonna probably have to go back and change that later. For now, let's check out this area and get all my treasure. And I did kinda lie, I have played one other Spyro. I played some Spyro that was on the Wii, and I... It was absolutely unplayable. Hello, Marco. Oh my god. Rescue ten dragons, okay. Uh it was it was literally unplayable because the the um Wii motion controls were so bad you couldn't get Spyro to do anything. And even for as little as I played that game, I also came to the realization that Sparks is really annoying. He just talks and he's kinda smarmy if I remember correctly, and it's just like, ah, oh, just stop. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Oh, it's a little floaty. A little bit of that early 3D floatiness. Ah, alright, okay. I think I got at least enough treasure. Here, let's go into here. Whee! Stone Hill. I found 66 treasures. They're all green and red. Spyro's pretty cute. I think his, uh, his, uh, Skylander's redesign is rather nice, too. It's a little, it's, it's different. It's a little more bulky and his tail is a little bit crazier. And he's darker colored, which I actually am not as fond of, because I really think Spyro benefits from being bright and colorful. And full of pointiness. Which he still is in Skylanders, but he's a little darker. But, you know, it's not that bad. They got Spyro's attitude. He says silly puns, which is probably accurate for this game I haven't really tested, but oh my goodness, Skyrim is full of the silly puns. Spikety horns beat rounded horns, you ram! Oh look, I found a dragon, good. And he's covered with tons of treasure. Lindar. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. Okay, good. So I guess the game does have an autosave function? I'm gonna save just in case anyway. I don't think it has an autosave function. It's really hard to tell. I'll definitely save before ending this session, because... Ooh. Oh, they're heat resistant. Okay, I gotta ram those. Cool. Alright. Learning stuff bit by bit. <laughs> I recently watched, uh, I think it was an amazing Games Done Quick, their charity event marathon. And somebody did Spyro the Dragon on that one, and it was insane! The person just rushed around all the time and knew exactly where to go. And I can barely register what the hell I'm doing at this speed, much less have enough accuracy to hit treasure chests without running into walls. Um... Ugh. Haha, Ram. This treasure chest has eyes. So... I'm like calcifying dragons to make extra lives or something. Oops. Hey, Aster. 
After you freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya. I think that was the dragon in the beginning. Whatever. We don't got time to talk to any old farts. Let's not go in there yet, because I don't think we've finished this level. Let's keep looking for stuff. I think I can get up there, but probably not from that direction. I probably have to find something that's more logical. Let's jump down this well, though. Whoop. Yay, there we go. More treasure and another dragon. I like saving the dragons. Ooh. Do I need a key for this? Hmm. I must need a key. Cool. Hey! No, I'm not done. Okay. Spyro has such a fun little loping run. It's very cute. Gavin. Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. When he eats butterflies, he stays strong. Like me. Uh, sure. You know, for the amount of polygons that they have, really did some really good animation with this. And the way he gestured with his wings there was really charming. I think that's why some of the times indie games do so well is because when you're an indie developer you don't have access to all these different people with thousands and thousands of hours of experience with the most high-tech gadgets who can help you have the very best graphics so you gotta you gotta make do with sometimes out of date graphics, but you can do a lot with technology that isn't completely up to par. And it really pushes you to put even more effort into it and really give it personality. Because if you can put enough personality in something, a lot of times people will overlook the fact that your your graphics are maybe a little on the shitty side. That sheep erupted into a butterfly. They're butter sheep. Whew. Eat it, you shepherds. So apparently, so it said at the beginning of the thing that nasty Nork. Okay, nasty good Nork. That's going to kill me to say it because it's the, the, the G. The G is supposed to be silent. I'm sure that's the joke, but it's still weird. So, Nasty Nork has turned how has figured out how to turn gems into minions. So that means the shepherds and the rams are minions, but the sheep are not because they turn into butterflies. Gildas. Spyro, my friend, how about a hint on gliding? You bet. For the longest glide, press the X button at the top of a jump and try pressing the triangle button to drop down in mid-flight. Triangle button. Okay. Not sure how far that guy's going to be able to fly. I mean, he was a little pot-bellied. Was doing well with those sheep. Okay. Okay. Ah! Okay. I got it. Nope, I don't need you. I'm fine. Wee. Ha! Ah, okay, I figured out flying. Good. Or gliding, rather. Can't fly. Oh! Found a fence. Oh, okay, so the fences are in between those poles. Okay. That's... That's nice that you... They, uh... Didn't have the ability to put a fence all the way around here, but they at least put markers so that you don't just run face first into fences that you don't know are there. Just a nice way to keep down the amount of stuff that you have to rent have to have a really old system render. Oh my god. Ah! Oh god. Um Yeah, keep down the amount that a system has to render while still giving the player like information on where they are and are not allowed to go.
Nowadays, invisible walls are kind of cheap because you have the technology to just make a full-blown wall. But often they just put invisible walls because it's easier, I guess. Kind of cheap. Kind of ruins... Like, this is kind of interesting. It's like, um... So invisible walls, their biggest problem is the fact that they knock the player out of immersion. But the thing is, is, with the walls over here... Get up, get up the hill. Walls over here, they are invisible walls, yes, but you get that little ring, so it's like something the dragons themselves have made, so you don't get knocked out of immersion anymore. It's part of the world. It's not just an invisible wall. I can see you blinking in and out of existence, you gem. It's not just an invisible wall, it's like a construct they actually created. Ah. I like that. Oh, how did I miss that one? Have I not gone, gone all- oh, guess I haven't gone all the way around. I must have gone on on this side. Where's the shore? I know I saw the shore. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I see. Okay. Can I, can I get... I can't... Okay. Good. That didn't... No! I need down. Nope. No. Still a little... No. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Because Spyro, like so many other characters, is incapable of swimming. Water is a very, very instant death. Silly? Yes, very. But it's an age-old traditional way of causing barriers. However, I do really think- Ooh! I found the key! Cool! Um, oh, I almost got all of those in one run. I do really think that they need to stop using that. Having the water be a barrier in modern games, there's really no reason for it unless you put a reason, like giant man-eating sharks or something. If you put giant man-eating sharks as your reason for why somebody can't go in the water, that's fine. That makes sense. But insta-drowning should not be allowed in current gen games. That shit's just silly. This doesn't look like the right one either. Where is that chest? I want that chest and that egg. Oh, was it down here? In the well? Yeah, okay, cool. Now I gotta go get the egg and then I'll be all done. Gimme. Yay! Alright. Oh, I got all of the gems! Fantastic! Now, let's see, we gotta get back up on a tower so that I can chase the egg thief. How do I get back up there? Chasing the egg thieves was always a bit on the difficult side for me. It's because the controls in this game are kinda wackadoo. They're a little bit floaty. He turns really sharply. Which actually, Guild Wars has the opposite problem, which is hilarious. Guild Wars 2, mind you. That game, you really have to crank up the turn speed if you are hoping to turn in any direction anytime soon. Okay, oh, am I gonna make it? Okay, good. Alright, now then. I saw that thief. And go! Okay. Wall. Okay. Oh no! Shoot! I gotta cut corners, because he's about the same f quickness as me. I think you can sneak up on him. I'm pretty sure that's how I've done it a couple times before. But that's not the way you're supposed to. I guess it's one of the ways that you're allowed to do it. Where'd he go? There he is. Oh, no. Oh my god, I'm like a race car! No! 
Ha! Okay, good. <sighs> Alright, done with this level. Yay! Baby eggs! Alright, let's... Eh, let's just keep going this direction. It'll f go for a full, full circle. Because the exit one is near the water, but I don't want to jump into the water because that would suck eggs. But not baby dragon eggs because that would be cannibalism. A little loping run. Mm. Alright. There we go. We're done with stone something or other. Got all the gems, the egg, and all the dragons, I believe, for that level. So 100% done. That's good progress. Stone Hill, that's right. So, I'll see you guys next time for whatever the next level is. I'll, I think it was the one that was in the, the little garden. Yeah, over here. It looks like starry and cool looking. So, that'll be fun. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.